Hello folks, hope you're having a great day today. Hey, today I'm going to take a look at a kind of a different story. It's by uh, Carl Stevenson. It's the only story he ever wrote in English. It's a version of his uh, German story that was published in 1937 called Leningen uh, versus the Ants. And um, it was pr printed the following year in 38 in Esquire magazine. So I want to take a look at it for you, do a quick little review synopsis of it. I'm told that it's heavily anthologized based on the research here and as well as other places. Um, he had originally written it in German, but um, and it was a novella length, but he also wrote uh, the English version, which was, which was um, a much smaller version. It's only 13 pages in my oversized, admittedly, uh, version of this collection of short stories from the pulp era that I have. Um, and I, this is the first time I've encountered it. Uh, I read it just now. I do like it. I like a lot of things that happen with it, although there's a couple of caveats. I'll give you the caveats right now. The first is, is that this is not a very good story when it comes to portraying women, uh, because women aren't in it at all. <laughs> uh, you know, there are some stories in the pulp era that kind of push back against women tropes in the pulp era. Typically, Robert Howard, for example, is a very, has some very strong women. Valeria, for example, in Red Nails, is a good is a good counter example of how women were portrayed as kind of weak, innocent, needed to be protected, and in this case, you're going to have the same thing. He basically does this. Are you ready? I'm going to read it to you here. This is on three pages into the short story after he finds out that his plantation is being a, 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 under assault, under potential assault by ants. Here's what he does: the women and children, and then the herds of cattle were escorted by peons on rafts over to the other side of the river to remain safe on in absolute safety until the plunderers had departed. The plunderers being the end. Uh, he gave this instruction not because he believed that the non-combatants were in any danger. He's not doing it because he wants to, them to be safe, right? But in order to avoid hampering the efficiency of the defenders. Because they're just going to get in the way, right? Critical situations first become crises, he explains to his men, when oxen or women... Get excited. <laughs> he just compared the women to, to livestock there. <laughs> and that's it. This is the only place in the entire thing where women and children are, where women are mentioned at all. Uh, they're just there to get a little getting away, just like uh, oxen will. Uh, they're going to get... For, so anyway, that's one take. A second is, is that the... Um, the local native Indians are, it's kind of, a, he's kind of a white savior. They treat him like he is a, a god because he's smart enough and he'll do things like, I don't know, later on in here, they're going to, they're going to applaud when he does such clever things as give, put light, light, light oil. On and they're going to be like, oh my God, that was so smart of you. Stuff like that. Uh, they, they treat him very deferentially, even though there's no reason for them to. They know more about the area and the ants than he does. Uh, they treat him very deferentially. There's one sentence in here that refers to them as his peons. Um, so there are these little lines um, and here and there that kind of show a little bit of this sort of old colonialism. It was written by Carl Stevenson. Now, Carl Stevenson was born in Austria in 1897. Um, and he lived up until about 1960, although we're not 100% sure of when he died. Because there are other Carl Stevensons, like there's a famous historian Carl Stevenson, um, who's, who, and so we don't have as much information biographically um, as we may have, but we believe he died about 1960. Um, this this short story, by the way, was also turned into a, um, a, a 1950s era movie starring Charlton Heston uh, called The Naked Jungle. And it co-stars a woman. I have not seen the movie. I can't tell you that. I'm not sure why. Women have absolutely no role in this at all. No, no female are mentioned. They're just as soon as they, they, they know that ants might be coming, let's get rid of them. Not because I think they might be in any danger, just because they're going to get in our way. <laughs> those women folk and those cattle are always causing us problems. That's a weird thing. <laughs> But anyway, um, but he also has this sort of uh, idea uh, for his people, too. He calls them stupid at a couple of times uh, when they're fighting ants and one of them does something he doesn't think they should do. Um, and he, so he, you get that he's kind of, he kind of sees like a white savior. Hey, I'm in here. I've got my plantation of 400 people, right? And so forth. you get the idea. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Um, but, the, but it has that sort of a colonial narrative, white savior Hey, I'm, I'm, I, I, they're, 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 they're not going to doubt me. They're not going to leave my side. They're going to be with me. I'm the smart one, um, and th these local savages needed need, need me to 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 be able to to plant things. Be a, you know, you get the idea. Um, so, uh, and he's excited by the ants coming. He's not going to flee like he's asked to by the local Brazilian uh, authorities because he likes the idea of taking them on. He's like they're not going to come in here. Uh, it's me. It's my mind against theirs, and I'm smarter. 
Uh, he, uh, he he definitely is like, I'm, I'm going to always win with this up here. So anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and do a quick synopsis of the story. It's Like I said, it's 13 pages in mine. Um, so again, he's going to have a, a Brazilian local guide who's going to come to him. He's going to say, hey, you definitely are going to want to leave. There's a wave of these new ants that are coming. Um, they're nasty. They're antagonistic. They're not like our normal sets of ants that we normally have. It's five miles long by two miles deep, so it's t 10 square miles total. Um, it's just a blanket of, of, of them. They're turning anything that they meet into bones in minutes and uh, leaving behind everything behind them. It is a giant swarm of ants, and they're acting more intelligently than ants might normally. Um, so he thinks, okay, well, um, what I want to do um, is prepare my defenses. I've already got defenses against ants. I'm not an idiot. I'm smart. Um, I have a moat. I have uh, um, some other things I can do to help prevent them, and I've also got a backup. Uh, where I've got some petrol uh, that I can that I can set down there in another circular kind of a moat as a backup thing that I can use to burn it to, to defend myself. So I can defend myself with water, and then if they get across the water, I can defend myself with um, uh, you know fire as my backup. I've also got plenty of petrol. Uh, we we have plenty of chemicals that we use on the plantation that'll kill them, right? We've got lots of these sorts of you know smart you know uh, things. So I'm I'm fine here. But thanks for the warning. But so then when the wave, so he starts preparing, he's going to, for example, have the tops of nearby trees cut down that they can reach on their bank because they might be able to crawl up on the tree and fall over into his thing. So he's doing those sorts of things. He's getting the moat prepared. He's getting the backup petrol moat prepared and doing all those sorts of things. Um, and then what you're going to have is you're basically going to have an assault on the, um, on the thing. It'll take two days on the first day. Um, their first, the assault by the ants is going to fail. Um, and then on the second day, and this is about halfway through the story, they're going to succeed because they grab, because they cut down a bunch of leaves from local trees and they actually sail across it in boats. He actually foreshadows this earlier on when he says the only way these people are going to get across this, this thing is with, is if they could make their own boats and they're not going to be able to do that. So I've won with the water, but I assume that maybe something will happen. So I've got some backup plans. That's about halfway through this. So he... He foreshadows that they're going to be able to get across it with boats, <laughs> uh, and of course they do. Um, they they cut down these leaves and, and they use them as as boats um, to get across the water. So and, and they get across the water. He, he after he sees them start to come over, he goes over to the dam's person and he'll have that dam's person raise and lower the the level of the water back and forth to create these waves in the in the moat, which will um, you know drop it back down um, and drop them all back down and then go back up and sweep them all back down the road. Uh, and down the road, down, down, downstream, um, and just basically create a current by by bringing the water back in and back out over and over and over again in the dam with the river. That's the goal. Um, it does not uh, work as well as he hoped, um, but it does have some initial um, impact. Uh, but then again, they're going to cross the cross the river. They're going to have to retreat, and that's about halfway through the story. And I'll leave you there. Um, I will give you a uh, uh, a link to it below. It's very well written. The story is very well paced. Very well paced. There's always something happening. Um, it goes to some fun places. Uh, uh, the idea of this massive horde of ants that's acting intelligently against this guy who's acting intelligently is pretty fun. Uh, and again, it's very it's it's a very well written story. Now I did, again with the two caveats. You know, it's it's very <laughs> right. It's very much not something that's that's fond of females. It's very much not something that's fond of natives, uh, from that sort of uh, European st st uh, uh, colonial era. Uh, you know, this guy was was born in Austria, lived in Germany. Um, he was writing in German. His original story was in German. Um, you know, and and since this is his only story in English, it, Carl Stevenson. This is going to be the only time I read a story of his and review it for you for here too. Um, but it does have some fun, different elements to it. It's it's a very fun adventure. I'll be happy to link it to you below. So I'll go ahead and leave you there. Let me know what you thought about it. Have you read it? Did you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts? Um, I'm happy to sort of engage you with it further. If there are any details in the second half of the story you want to unpack, I'm happy to do that with for you as well. Um, and I'm happy to engage you with that further. Um, and if you like this review and this video, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more of these sorts of classics that people have thought about or, or forgotten about. In this case, it was a short story in 37 that inspired a movie that you might have seen and it's been heavily anthologized and was published in Esquire. So this is something that's actually a part of our, I think, a part of our canon. It's the first time I've encountered it, but I found at least five or six collections that I've collected it. Um, big, bigger name ones, not smaller ones like here's some pulp stories, <laughs> like the ones that I have, uh, but some other ones out there too. So it is kind of a part of our canon. I'm happy, so I'm happy to, to kind of read it and review it for you and have it for you out there today as a part of this sort of concept of maybe lost classics or classics you may have heard about but never had a chance, you know, to actually go out and read. Like if you'd watched Naked Jungle, but you never realized it was from 
from the short story, or you just never bothered to check it out because you had heard about it, but you didn't know. And now you can, you know, maybe you'll be inspired to do that for you. So uh, I'll leave that there for you. And hey, if you watch this video all the way to the end, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and investing it in my video and my, myself. Uh, you know, we all have such busy days and so, so, many, so many things happening in our lives that are pulling us in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's very humbling and I appreciate that. So thanks again and have a good one.